Amen, amen. Bless God. We are here. I'm Pastor Alicia Williams. Welcome to Life in Christ in the National Church. Welcome to our very, very last midweek Bible study in 2021. The Lord has been so very gracious to us this year. He has kept us through dangers seen and unseen. He has blessed us to wake up every morning, every day of this year to give him glory, honor, and praise, to be in our right minds, to have life, health, and strength. And so we're coming tonight as we close out in this uh, 2021, as we close out in our last uh, midweek Bible study, after celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, after celebrating Christmas all around the world, globally, honoring God and blessing God for a Savior, born in a manger. And so tonight, as we finish up this month, where we glean and we learn as much as we can about what the Bible teaches us about the birth of Christ, we simply come for just a moment. We simply come here to study and to uh, uh, glean from God's Word for just a moment about the finale, about the finish, about the completion of celebrating the birth of Christ. And the completion, and we'll come to find it in the reading of God's word on tonight, is in celebrating the birth of Christ. I know that all month long we've been celebrating him. We've been reminding ourselves and reminding each and every person that we come into contact with that Jesus is the reason for the season. But tonight, as we close out this year, tonight as we close out this month of gleaning what the Bible teaches us about the birth of Christ, tonight we're going to take some time to look at celebrating the birth of Christ. When we get into the word on tonight, I believe that the Lord will minister to our hearts tonight about the essence and about the importance of celebrating the birth of Christ. I know that in our services, we are reminded and we worship and we honor and we praise God for the birth of his son, Christ Jesus. But when we, after the birth, after celebrating the birth, after honoring and reverence the birth, it brings us, I believe, to a personal place with our Lord and Savior. It brings us to a personal place where we take time to, to quiet our souls, to quiet our spirits and see on a more personal level what it means to celebrate the birth of Christ. It's important that we know the importance and the significance of the birth of Christ. It's important that we take time to reverence and to honor and to worship and to praise. And it's important that we come into a place of celebrating the birth of Christ on a personal level. And that's what our study is going to be about tonight, celebrating the birth of Christ. That's the title of our last and final midweek Bible study of the year, celebrating the birth of Christ. And with that being said, let us go ahead and open tonight in a word of prayer. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord God. We thank you for the time. We thank you for the opportunity to glean and to study in your word. We thank you, Father, for understanding the divine importance of celebrating the birth of Christ. We thank you for this season where all over the globe we come to honor you and to reverence you and to thank you and to lift up holy hands to glorify you for the birth of your precious son, Jesus Christ. Father, as we take time in this midweek Bible study, as we take time, oh God, in your word and in the study of your word, be with us, oh dear God. Lead, guide, and direct, oh dear God, in all things. Continue, oh God, to reveal the fullness of who you are in our walk, in our relationship with you, in our day-to-day -day lives, in our thoughts, in our actions, and in our behavior. We love you, Lord, and we bless you and we praise you. We thank you tonight for life in Christ in the National Church. We thank you, Father, for reaching lost souls one life at a time. We glorify you for it, O oh God, in all things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So, tonight we know that the title of this midweek Bible study is Celebrating the Birth of Christ. I believe that 
um, for the last month, um, we have been reverencing and, and honoring and celebrating uh, the birth of Christ. But tonight specifically, in this last midweek Bible study, we're going to look at celebrating and what it means to celebrate the birth of Christ. And I pray that you all are here with me on tonight. And I pray that in this lesson and in this study that the Lord would indeed minister to your heart and your life about celebrating the birth of Christ. We know that on Christmas and the purpose of us celebrating Christmas and having Christmas is for the birth of Christ. We know that baby Jesus is the reason for the season, as the songwriter says. But tonight, I want us to be sober about celebrating. I want us to be sober about coming into celebrating. We celebrate in our churches. We celebrate with our families. But tonight, we're going to look specifically at, on a personal level, what it means to celebrate the birth of Christ. And so, this is tonight our very last Bible study of the year. And, and we conclude this month of December with um, uh, what we've been uh, sharing about um, all month long, gleaning and learning about the birth of Christ. And so this year, at the end of this year, this midweek Bible study leads us into celebrating the birth of Christ and gleaning and learning about celebrating the birth of Christ. We know that the title of our midweek Bible study tonight is simply celebrating the birth of Christ. So we have, I believe, all month long uh, experienced what God's word teaches us about the birth of Christ. This month, the Lord ministered to us about his 700 year old prophecy and the fulfillment of that prophecy. The Lord ministered to us in the life and the experience of Joseph's and, and Mary's angelic encounter. And, and we gleaned um, um, the details of Christ's birth. And, and so tonight, as we close 2021 in this midweek Bible study, we end tonight by gleaning and continuing to fully embrace what the Bible teaches us about the birth of Christ and specifically celebrating the birth of Christ. So tonight we, we take time. We Tonight we, we take opportunity in this midweek Bible study to read in God's word about celebrating the birth of Christ. On Christmas, we know that we, we honor God by, by, by celebrating the birth of his son. And, and tonight, we will take time to see, I believe, what honoring and what celebrating the birth of Christ means as captured in the word of God. I am tonight encouraged to relive the celebration of the birth of Christ from the biblical scripture. To, to I am encouraged to relive through God's word what celebrating the birth of Christ meant to the Magi, to the, the wise men that had come from the East. And, and as always, I'm encouraged and, and I also encourage you to take a closer look at what the Lord is ministering in and through his word on tonight about celebrating the birth of Christ. I know that today it, it means for us enjoying friends and family and, and great food and, and gifts and, and we gather together to, to honor God. But tonight, tonight I, I charge you all the more to take a look at the Magi in scripture. Take a look at the three wise men and embrace with them the celebration of the birth of Christ. This is what we are encouraged tonight to take into the new year, a time of celebrating the birth of Christ, a time of reliving that earthly experience here some 2,000 years ago, but also being intentional about what 
this sacred time of year, this sacred occasion means to us on a more personal level. Tonight, I, I, I can point you, um, to keep it simple, I, I can point you in the direction of God's word. I, I can share from my own personal experience. But what matters most after all is said and done is where do you find yourself in the Lord? What position will this take your heart and your walk and your relationship with God as we go into this new year? And, and so tonight, again, the title of this midweek Bible study lesson is simply celebrating the birth of Christ. And in this lesson, we glean and we learn about the Magi, the, the, the three, three wise men. And we know this is a familiar story. We, we often encourage our youth ministry, our youth church to, to have plays and, and rehearse this account of scripture. But tonight, as we carve out time, as, as we thank God for 2021 and, and, and as we prepare to sell, say hello to 2022, where do we find ourselves in personal reference? Where do we find ourselves on a personal level in celebrating the birth of Christ? On, on Christmas, we all gathered and when we celebrated together with family and friends. But, but tonight, as, as we look at this account of scripture, as we see the, the Magi celebrate the birth of Christ, where does that lead us on a personal level? That's our question. That's our challenge. That's our charge on tonight. And each of us, We'll find ourselves all in a different place with the Lord. It doesn't matter where you find yourself in the Lord as long as you find yourself in a personal walk and relationship with God as it pertains to celebrating the birth of Christ. Tonight our study once again forces us, I believe, to take note but, but this time from a personal place in and with our walk and relationship with the Lord. Um, for, for us to, to take heart in this matter and, and have courage to fully embrace celebrating the birth of Christ on a more personal level. And, and so tonight we're reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the, the second chapter. We... we no, many of us know this passage of scripture. As I already mentioned, many young people have memorized these verses. But tonight, as we read in God's word, where will we find ourselves? What, what, what change will take place in our hearts on a personal level? I believe our scripture reading allows us, it, it, it gives us opportunity to grow in grace on a more deeper level as we take courage and fully embracing, celebrating the birth of Christ. I, I, I know it would be easy to say that Christmas has passed and, and, and celebrating Christ's birth is now behind us. But I charge you with a simple question. You are to answer this for yourselves. And that question and that response simply is, is celebrating Christ's birth over? Is it? Is it behind us? In other words, do we desire to live a life, and I'll clarify this, as half-boiled eggs, and this is, it's just an analogy, but I like, and I prefer hard-boiled eggs, I don't want anything gooey, 
And so in our walk, in our relationship with the Lord and understanding the fullness of God, as it pertains to celebrating his birth, as it pertains to celebrating Christmas, we want to be in the full. We don't want to be half-boiled. We want to be 110% in God and in the things of God. And so tonight, the Lord is ministering to us about celebrating the birth of Christ. And, and I believe, in other words, how well will we surrender our lives to the Lord to allow him to reveal himself in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds and souls in a greater way? When, when we talk about celebrating the birth of Christ, it doesn't stop on Christmas Day. It's an eternal celebration. And I think I want to say that again so that it's clear, so that it resonates with you. When we talk about celebrating the birth of Christ, it doesn't stop on Christmas Day. It's an eternal celebration. We are charged, we are empowered, we are encouraged to celebrate and help and encourage others to come into the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior. And, and again, we know that tonight our lesson is going to take us into the Gospel of Matthew, the second chapter. That's where we're going to be reading um, our scripture on tonight. And that's where we're going to start uh, our scripture reading on tonight. And in this account of scripture, we visit a familiar passage. Scripture we visit and, and revisit every year around Christmas time. But tonight, as we close out this year, where will God find our hearts for him as it pertains to celebrating the birth of Christ Jesus? We already know um, in, in our midweek Bible study, we, we, we read and we study from the Amplified Bible. So if you use the New International Version or if you use the King James Version, it's going to read slightly different, a bit more wordier. But it's the same word of God. It's the same message. And so again, tonight we're reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the second chapter. We're going to start reading tonight at verse 1. And we're going to conclude. We're going to stop reading um, in scripture tonight at verse 12. That's where we're going to end our, our, our uh, last and final midweek Bible study for the year. And that's where we're finishing up. And so I challenge you, as we go into the very last scriptures of the year for this midweek Bible study, I challenge you, make it count. Amen, amen, amen. So as we go into God's word on tonight, I want you to, I, I encourage you to divide, define in advance what celebrating the birth of Christ means to you on a personal level. Look at where God finds your heart and, and, and bring it before God. Uh, I, I'm not asking for you to, to share, but it's, it's, it's a personal level. It's a one-on-one. -on -one, it's a face-to-face -face with God. So bring it before God so that God can reveal to you where he is. Amen. And so let's be mindful tonight to reach, to, to embrace the full manifestation of God's word tonight on celebrating the birth of Christ. Again, we're in the Gospel of Matthew, a very familiar passage of scripture. We're reading from the second chapter. We're beginning at the first verse. And so I want you all to read along with me in the word of God. Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, the second chapter reads for us tonight, starting at verse one. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, Herod, the great, Magi, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, verse two, where is he? who has been born king of the Jews. For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Verse three, when Herod the king heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. Verse four, 
So he called together all the chief priests and scribes of the people and anxiously asked them where the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed was to be born. Verse 5, they replied to him in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what has been written by the prophet Micah. Verse 6, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not in any way least among the leaders of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. That's how we start off learning about and gleaning about from the word of God what it means to celebrate the birth of Christ. I believe that the Lord leads us into gleaning and, and understanding um, how he's ministering to us tonight from his word about celebrating the birth of Christ. I love how the Lord allows us to recognize his plan and how his plan unfolds and how he will save the world from sin and condemnation. How, how he has and will fulfill his promise, the fulfillment of the prophecy in the book of Isaiah as well as in the book of Micah. The Lord through his word allows us to understand that the king of that time, Herod the Great, was the word that I'll use is conniving. The, the, the words that I'll use is, is, is full of trickery. He calls for, Herod the king calls for almost everyone to find out about the birth of Christ so he could try and destroy him. King Herod even called, as we read in scripture, the Magi. He called the three wise men. He even calls the chief priests and, and scribes. And, and, and the scripture tells us that he anxious, anxiously asked tell him, for them to tell him what is found and, and how to found the Christ. And, and they respond to him and they tell him it's found and he's found according to what has been written by the prophet Micah. And that's what the scripture says. And, and they, they read for him. They, they, they share with him what is written by the prophet Micah. And they say to King Herod, um, and you, which is written in the book of Micah, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not in any way least among the leaders of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And so, so I believe we hear it all the time about how the enemy wants to still kill and destroy. And even tonight in the word of God, through this account of scripture about the birth of Jesus, that even Herod, the king, the king of that time was seeking to harm. It's imperative. We remain vigilant. It's imperative we remain confident and completely sure about God and the things of God. I, I feel like even as we glean from this account of scripture, we don't have to um, go overboard. It's clear that it's imperative for us to remain in God. It's imperative for us to remain in things of God because the enemy is out there. But our scripture reminds us tonight, 1 Peter 5, 8, Satan is seeking whom he may devour. And I'm going to read that. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be sober well-balanced and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. I thought it was of grave importance that 
I emphasize that on tonight, even as we look at the account of scripture that ministers to us about celebrating the birth of Christ. And so we are to be vigilant. It is imperative. I know um, when, when, when we just take a minute, the question may be, what exactly does that have to do with celebrating the birth of Christ? And my response to you is absolutely everything. You must be vigilant not to allow the enemy to steal. You must be vigilant not to allow the enemy to kill. You must be vigilant not to allow the enemy to destroy. You let him in. My mother, God rest her soul, used to say you, 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 you give the enemy an inch and they want to take a mile. You give a, a, a someone a rope and they want to be a cowboy and so being discerning in the will of God being discerning in the things of God it is imperative and it has absolutely everything to do with celebrating the birth of Christ if you open yourselves up to the enemy's tactics and plans and schemes and trickery and ways, then you risk forfeiting, and hear me clearly, you risk forfeiting your privilege, your right to celebrating the birth of Christ, your right as, as a baptized Christian believer to celebrating the birth of your Lord and Savior. Don't let anyone steal that kill that or destroy that or try and take that from you. And so I'm encouraged to, to share adamantly, don't let anyone dictate where you will spend your eternity. Choose for yourselves and choose God now. And, and, and that's why it's important to study the Word of God. That's why it's important to visit and revisit the Word of God, not just what it says on paper, but most importantly, what it is in your hearts. That's part of how we will pay our toll into heaven through Christ Jesus and the precious blood that he shed on the cross. But we have to know personally where we sit with God in our hearts, where and what our celebrating his birth looks like personally. And, and, and it, it doesn't have to be a big deal. All you have to do is just talk with him one on one from your heart face to face. Not in big crowds or to impress people, but when no one else is listening, when no one else is around, when you're away from crowds. Let God minister to your life and your walk and your relationship with him. That's the essence of what it means, too, when we come to it, celebrating the birth of Christ. And so tonight... It's about celebrating the birth of Christ, but it's also about taking time to define for ourselves what that means on a more personal level. Again, tonight, my prayer is that God continues through his word to work out in your lives and in your heart and in your minds and your soul the full manifestation of celebrating the birth of Christ, even as we come to the end of this year, especially as we come to the end of this year. I, I, I believe tonight's insight and, and revelation and divine direct declaration allows us to be intentional about our personal response to celebrating the birth of Christ. So again, this midweek Bible study 
as as we end this year is about being personal and celebrating the birth of Christ. Not 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 emotional, not not anxious, but intentional and personal. Again, we're we're reading tonight in God's word from the gospel of Matthew. And I believe the Lord is allowing us to revisit a familiar account of scripture about the birth of Christ from a different angle, from from a more personal place where we know God is a relational God. He's about relationship. More importantly, our personal relationship with him. I, I believe that's why God has graced us to be able to celebrate the birth of Christ so that we don't miss the preciousness of his eternal gift. And so let's continue reading as we allow the Lord to reveal and unfold to us tonight in his word as captured in this account of scripture in the gospel of Matthew in this Bible lesson and study on celebrating the birth of Christ. Again, tonight we know that our midweek Bible study is about celebrating the birth of Christ. And so as we continue and as we come to the finish of um, our midweek Bible study on tonight, and as we conclude this year and, and, and our final midweek Bible study of the year, let's reach to be empowered and enriched to to embrace a greater place in God as it pertains to celebrating the birth of Christ on a more personal level as we glean and learn and experience from God's word. And so with that being said, again, we're finishing tonight our last uh, few verses from the Gospel of Matthew, the second chapter. And we're completing tonight's study um, and, and finishing the year with God on a more personal level. And so we'll pick up reading at verse seven and um, I want you all to read along with me. We're in the gospel of Matthew, the second chapter. We're picking up our scripture reading at verse seven, Matthew chapter two, verse seven reads for us on tonight out of the Amplified Bible. Then Herod secretly sent for the Magi and learn from them the exact time the star had first appeared. Verse eight, then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search carefully for the child. And when you have found him, report to me so that I too may come and worship him. Verse nine, after hearing the king, they went their way and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went on before them continually leading the way until it came and stood over the place where the young child was. Verse 10, when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Verse 11, and after entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshiped him. Then after opening their treasure chest, they presented to him gifts fit for a king, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Verse 12, and having been warned by God in a dream not to go back to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. I love the richness of this account of scripture. I love how the Lord leads us uh, to glean as he ministers uh, from his word and through his word about celebrating the birth of Christ. As we read these final verses on tonight, we find God in his word. We find uh, his wholeness, his his completeness. I, I believe we find the complete essence of what it means to celebrate the birth of Christ. They were led to the place. They avoided and, and were able to discern the, the trickery of, of 
Herod the Great, the king. And the scripture tells us when they arrived where Christ was, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Tonight, we are encouraged to find on a more personal level where we are personally, not in crowds and in groups, but personally in our hearts before God when arriving to celebrate the birth of Christ. My prayer tonight, my, 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 my encouragement tonight is that the Lord God find in our hearts, our minds, and our souls, and that he finds us rejoicing exceedingly with great joy. And, and, and so tonight, on a personal level, we are rejoicing exceedingly with great joy, celebrating the birth of Christ even after Christmas, especially after Christmas. Don't, don't miss what the Lord is providing and has provided in this season. In our scriptures, the Lord reminds us that the Magi, the, the three wise men, didn't show up to receive gifts, but they brought gifts, the scripture says. Gifts of gold and of frankincense and of myrrh. Gifts fit for a king. That's what the scripture shares. So, so this year, we, we may not have gold and, and frankincense and myrrh. We, we, we may not have resources to, to offer gifts fit for a king. But hear God on tonight. It's not only about the presence, but most important, it's about our hearts with God. Even when I think about uh, the youth church, and, 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 and the theme for the youth church this year, Christmas, the Grinch that stole Christmas knows this. And, and you can ask the youth. It's not about just the presence, but it's about the heart. The heart that grows two sizes during the Christmas time, during the Christmas season. And so as we finish up our, our, our Bible study and as we come to the end of this year, this is a lesson that we will carry all year long. This is a lesson that we will carry into our new year because our, our gifts to celebrate the birth of Christ can be in our service. It can be in our praying. It can be in our worship. There is no limit, but it's up to us to use it's up to us to be active, be vigilant, diligent, be vigilant, be intentional and personal about rejoicing exceedingly with great joy. Amen. And so tonight, the Lord ministered to us about celebrating the birth of Christ. The Lord ministered to us about being personal. Um, and, and tonight as we close... I want to share, as always, I pray that, that this study continues to bless your soul and that it continues to reach you right where you are. And what I mean by that, you may have been serving in the church a long time. You may have just started. You may be even at the point where you're just thinking about serving God. Wherever you are, God is still God. And he's the one. That's your Lord and Savior. He's your comforter, your peace, and your keeper. He's who we're celebrating in this great season. And so as we close again, I pray that the Lord continue to, to, to minister and, and, and bring you close um, uh, in this new year. We are a few hours away from the new year. We are a, a few hours away from what's new, what will be new. And, and it's up to us to be personal about celebrating the birth of Christ, not only on Christmas Day, but all year long, even as we go into this new year. And so before we close, I do want to share just a little bit um, um, the church announcements that we have as we prepare to go into 2022. We will 
um, continue to have our virtual Zoom services. This is a virtual um, platform. This is a virtual environment until the Lord says different. And so what that means for us here at Life in Christ in the National Church, we will um, have our Sunday school services every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. This will be, the Lord has graced us to be going into our second year. 2021 was our very first year. And so 2022 is our second year. We'll have our Sunday school hour every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Every year, the church hosts um, an eight-week minister's training. Um, and, and what that training is designed to do is to touch on and hit upon biblical basics, basic Christian theology, so that it is indeed precept upon precept, line upon line, we believe the word of God in its entirety. We believe there is no flaw. We believe in its wholeness. And so um, as a, a Christian believer, if you are uh, uh, led to, to serve in the church, if you feel like the Lord is calling you to street ministry or if he's calling you to missions or to evangelistic work, um, it's good to to have a sound foundation in the minister's training. That eight-week course helps prep you for that. And so we'll have that um, eight week starting uh, the end of March. So, so I want everyone to participate in that and be involved in that. Of course, every Thursday evening, we will continue with our virtual Bible study, midweek Bible study. So every Thursday at 730, we'll have that. And then um, every month, we will have our end of month worship. And so January the 16th, Sunday morning, we will have our 10 a.m. Sunday school hour. And directly after that, we'll go into our Sunday service, our virtual service. And so that's what the Lord has planned for us in 2022. That's what's on our docket to fulfill the call uh, uh, to reach lost souls for Christ one life at a time. I strongly believe it's not about the numbers, but it's about reaching lost souls. We know that the scripture ministers to us about the 99 and God leaving the 99 to go after the one. That's the kind of God we serve. And we thank God for that opportunity. We thank God for that call. And we pray that every soul that the Lord brings our way, every soul that we encounter, that they're that much more blessed, that much more encouraged, that much more enriched in God and in the things of God. And so with that being said, life in Christ in the National Church, I'm Pastor Alicia Williams, and we end this year honoring blessing and praising God, celebrating the birth of Christ on a more personal level, meaning that we read about it, we prayed about it, and the Holy Ghost is leading us to do something about it. And we thank the Lord God for that. And with that being said, we're going to close tonight with a word of prayer. We'll see you back here Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our Sunday school hour. Amen. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for celebrating the birth of Christ. We thank you for that gift. We thank you for that opportunity. Continue, oh dear God, to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. Continue to bring us into the full manifestation of who you are in our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Father, we thank you, Father, for 2021. We thank you in advance, oh dear God, for 2022. You get the glory, oh God. You get the honor, oh God. You get the praise. Father, we recognize that without you, oh God, we will be nothing. And so, Lord God, life in Christ and in the national church, oh God, is just that. Our life, oh God, is in you. You continue, Father, to have your way. We love you and we bless you and we praise you. Thanking you, oh God, for all that you did for us in 2021. We got a chance to spend time with our young people. We got a chance to do our minister's training. We had our Sunday school lessons, our end of month worship. We didn't want or lack for anything. That's the kind of God that we serve. And for that, oh dear God, we honor you for it, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. Father, as we leave from our midweek Bible study, as we leave, oh dear God, from this service, but never, ever from your presence. Be with us, oh God. Go before us, oh dear God. Fathers, we prepare to celebrate the new year. Dispatch your angels to encamp about us on every hand and on every side. Keep us all safe and protected, oh God, and covered in your blood. And all these things we bring before you now, oh God, in Jesus' name. 
Amen and amen. God bless you all. We'll see you Sunday morning for our Sunday school hour. May the Lord continue to minister to your heart and soul. Amen.